to the open forum. So this is an opportunity for anybody to address the council. I don't know if you guys, we pretty much know what you guys are here for. So if you feel good with it, I can introduce what you're, what you guys are here for. Sure. Um, Okay. okay, great. Perfect. We'll take care of it. Yeah, I was going to say, I had asked Mike if we could just make it. Was it going to be an we'll just, agenda item? We'll just put it in. I, yeah, yeah let's we'll start on the agenda. Yeah. Anyone else I for the open forums? I still probably going to be too much need to yeah. chat. I don't but think so. Easier. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Chico's just here to listen. You guys, we know why you're here. Anybody, anything else for the open forum? Anybody get any letters or anything like that? All right, closing the open forum, moving on to the consent agenda. I'm sorry, so, excuse me. Okay. I, I, got a, I got one phone call. Okay. <clears throat> um, I guess it's just, uh, I don't know. We have a leash law in Grand Marais, correct, for walking your dog? Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, that's for the city limits proper, mm -hmm. including everywhere in the city limits. Well, I just had a request by someone who wanted to know um, if there's other types of leash laws, like nuisance leash laws, or you know something, a variation of what we have for animals that may be well trained, that stay beside their owner wherever they go and how they walk, and they're not a nuisance, but yet they're not on a leash. So I'm wondering. It was just a discussion that this person had with me hmm. about that type of situation and I thought I would just bring it up I mean was this person getting hassled because their dog wasn't on a leash and uh, that yeah. sort of thing okay dogs not on a leash so it was just uh, but I do know like in the rec park for example when you have so many people consolidated in a small area that having an animal on a leash is probably more of a safety thing for the dog not mm -hmm. getting run over plus right. for the you know, it's protect the dog and also protect the owner and protect small children and people who are approaching animals that aren't on a leash. Right. So I don't know, I just thought I'd bring it up. I don't know what other cities have done. I thought maybe if our attorney has ever heard about a nuisance leash law or stuff like that, I have no idea. Our code says that animals have to be leashed and under the effective control of their owner. Okay. So, I mean, I suppose you could say or instead of and, but okay. I think the idea of enforcing it when you have to decide what effective control means would make it really, really difficult. Really hard. Right. Yeah. What about animals uh, not leashed but are on um, the owner's property? I think that's different. Mm, I don't think so. I don't think no? it is. Chris, anything to weigh in on that? I just, I, we, we have to look into I'm just what the ordinance language says. Okay. Yeah, do you want fair. us to do that? Is this something you want us to? So know, we we might be able to handle this just one off, just as a one off. Yeah, we'll that's kind of what I was thinking. I just thought idea, I'd dig into it a little bit and see. It's an interesting question because I know, I know of several people in town who have dogs, like hunting caliber trained dogs that that when they go for bike rides and walks and stuff like that, the dogs are just like, like nailed to their side and right. they won't leave for anything. <laughs> right. But it's, you know, I understand why the, why the rules in place. And, so. and I don't think that changing the rule is necessarily going to change the, that interaction with that person Probably. either. Like it's not a code issue necessarily. Right. I also would be shocked if a deputy wrote somebody a ticket yeah. in a situation like that. So, I think we can let let me know if you want us to research and bring you options. Okay. I just thought bring it up. Thank you. Cool. Yep. Thanks for bringing it up. <coughs> this is good. We're going to stick with the dog with the dog theme here for a Lead second. Into the new um, well, we so we should probably just talk about two things you want to add to the agenda before the um, consent agenda is considered. Cuz there's also the county's request to do right. the um, modify the precincts that they right. mm -hmm. they sent so there's that yeah. that I would say we could throw at the end of the meeting and then the question from the county administrator about making a um, financial commitment for the for the animal pound that we could put on the beginning of the meeting if that would make sense to folks yep mm -hmm. well, I think that works that works pretty well so we're gonna add um, we're gonna add the dog pound funding conversation um, below D and then that's going to bump everything down so that uh, precinct conversation will be below H. And we'll 
Or do you want to do between before council and staff reports, do the precinct? That's what I mean. Yeah. It's going to bump. Is that what she said? It's going to bump all the other. I don't think it's what he said, but I'm pretty sure it's what he meant. It's going okay. to bump all the other numbers <laughs> or all the other letters down one. Yeah. So then oh. basically we're going to do it before council and staff reports. Okay. That's where I was. Which will be H. See? Except now it's going to be I. Oh, boy. I know. That's fine. <sighs> See? That was right. That was right. I okay. would make a motion to approve the consent agenda as amended. <laughs> I would second. Motion and a second. We cut all that out. It's good. Any further discussion? <laughs> Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carries. All <laughs> right. So we're going to move right along to the dog pound uh, funding conversation. So. Um, Welcome news, right? Yeah. On, on this. That, we got moved yeah. It, a question awesome. from the county administrator on Monday, which is. Does the city have an amount in their budget this year? And we don't, but that doesn't mean we don't have an intention to do it. Uh, the county does have an amount in their budget in 2022, which is $25,000. And he asked if you would also be willing to then uh, set aside a, a specific amount that you're committing towards the project, which I think the $25,000 is the amount that makes sense. So it's encouraging to see motion forward on this and having the sheriff uh, being ready to take action. So participation by the city seems appropriate. So you can just make a motion and, and vote for that. And then uh, what James said is that that frees up the project to continue to move forward. And the next step would be for uh, the Animal Advocates Group to work on the stormwater management plan. And we'll continue to work on the construction plans. And they'll have their budget numbers from us and from the county and they have their own funding as well and this will be a substantial amount for a you know a very good project okay i make a motion that the city set aside twenty five thousand dollars toward the new and much needed dog pond i didn't need the adjectives yeah that's right it'll it's official now there's a motion is there a second i'll second motion and a second any further discussion no, this is just oh. taking way too long. Yep, and thank you. Thank you to Air the Arrowhead Animal Advocates and to the Sheriff and everyone who's worked on it. Let's get this thing done. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carries. So are we, are we waiting on the... Uh, Snow? <laughs> no. Well, no. I mean the joint, like a joint powers... Thing, like the conversation between the two entities now the county's involved like or is stuff kind of happening like obviously like this came forward but I got I don't did I talk to one of you on the phone maybe With the land you mean? talk to no just about an update on what's happening and I guess I was under the understanding of what I told whoever called me um, that I thought that you know the land stuff had been sorted out. I don't think it had been officially transferred yet, but like the, there was intention for it. Yeah. But I thought because now that the county was involved with this, that there had to be a, it wasn't quite as simple of as it moving forward with just the city, right? Because we could, but we had to do a joint powers because I don't think like so. We no. don't have to. We have a joint powers with the county for law enforcement already. Oh, so it's, it falls underneath that. It's a service contract, and that's why the county's involved because ah. the sh that's why the sheriff's taking the lead because the sheriff is your chief law enforcement officer, and this is a, a law enforcement issue for the city. But it's also an issue for outside of city limits for the county too. They, right? they uh, I mean, I'm sure that is part of the county's conversation. Right. I don't know what role they want to have in it. Um, I don't okay. think we need anything as complicated as a joint powers agreement. I wasn't sure. This. I just know that we talked about it and then yeah. we hadn't really heard anything. And so my understanding was that that was kind of, it was that like trying to figure out that relationship or Yeah, whatever. I think there's more details to be firmed up there, but it's not in the critical path. Okay. I mean, the critical path here is get a stormwater management plan done, yeah. get a contractor lined up, get the land uh, officially Squirly. transferred to whomever. Yeah. So I think now that you've done this, those steps can move forward. Okay. And it sounds like we'll probably need to get the band back together and have a conversation about that too with uh, all the players and make sure we all know how we're going to do it. Awesome. <coughs> sounds good. Cool. Thanks. Very good. You guys are awesome. Thank you. We're going to move on. You guys can stay and listen if you want. Did you have any? Did you guys want to say any? Did you have any? Up to anything you, you guys no. have at all. 
<laughs> you all set? No, we're good. We're not going to get into this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Very wise. Very yeah, wise. We got this. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So um, next thing on the agenda. So this is our, our progress report for the climate action plan. So a couple week, wait, a month ago, a couple months ago. Man, time just means nothing anymore. Um, a while ago, we had a um, we had a, a, a climate emergency declaration that the city council passed, which kind of brought back up like, hey, this climate action plan thing that we did in 2019, what have we done? What have we actually accomplished? So we've got Shane here who's been working with the city to, um, to accomplish these things and we've made some significant headway. So I'll let you take it from there, Shane. Mike asked me to put together a presentation to update you all. So I put together a memo. These slides are pretty much exactly what's in the memo with a few other things. Um, so first of all, goals of the plan were <coughs> to significantly reduce carbon emissions for the city by 2040. In fact, n to net zero by 2040. Uh, the graph to the right shows our emissions. Most of it is from electricity, but there is some heating fuel, which is propane, and, and then transportation fuel to account for. Uh, and the strategies to, to uh, accomplish the goals are to decarbonize the electricity and then electrify our heat and our transportation and then increase the efficiency of our buildings so that we don't need to rely on so much energy because it's it's uh producing renewable energy is we want to we don't want to have to produce more than we need so being efficient it just makes us more efficient some changes since the plan was passed which 2019 june of 2019 um since then, SIMPA, our electricity provider, has changed their, um, their outlook on climate change and carbon emissions, and they now recognize climate change as a threat. They have changed their, um, their plans to, well, their, their electric mix, um, they're planning to reduce the emissions of their a generation by 80 percent by 2030 and they're gonna have a lot of initiatives for transportation electrification and building heat electrification so this is a a huge partner to have which at the time the plan was written they weren't exactly an ally um, they were just kind of our electricity provider but if I go back one slide, 65% of our emissions are electrical. electrical. And now their goals surpass our goals. So the, this, this, is a, this is a great partner to have now. SIMPA is, um, aligns with our goals. I'd say even when we adopted it. That was always my impression that this was going to be our most powerful tool to use to make any change was our partnership with SIMPA. And at the time, for those folks that helped out in preparing the plan, it was probably very frustrating because, you know, SIMPA was created around a coal-fired power plant. Um, and that is still its largest asset and will remain it, its largest asset for some time yet. And the idea of uh, you know, the nice thing about electricity is that they do long-term planning like this. They have to when you make investments in facilities like that. You know, you have to look decades into the future. And they're decades into the future. And now, like Shane said, is talking about renewables basically as the core of their power <coughs> supply, which is much different conversation than we were having. And I don't know how different it was from their own internal planning conversations, but their external documents, and you can see SIMPA 2.0 is their current strategic direction. Um, they, this is what they talk about, and it just lines up exactly with what we're trying to do. So, mm -hmm. boy, are we fortunate. Mm 
-hmm. Yeah, if you page back through the climate action plan, there are a lot of things in there that we're trying to accomplish without SIMPA's help that just don't need to happen now because SIMPA is on board. And so lots of <laughs> lots of the climate action plan, this the suggested tactics in there, we don't really need to worry about anymore because SIMPA is going to take care of those for us. And so there's some programs that we can help them with, but mostly they're helping us. And the best part about it in my mind is we're 0.8 percent of SIMPA's load. Um, but we were, we were about 95 percent of their pain in the butt on this. Though. I don't know how much that's true. You know, maybe we were that much of their pain in the butt, but I think yeah. there was a lot of folks that we were. were a part of making this change for them, and it just happens to line up with us. But it's not just us that's changing. It's the entire SIMPA system. So sure. we're leveraging, even if it was just a little bit of our effort, this, this whole system that we're 0.8% of, which is, the, uh, you know, you think about well, how can a small town like this have a climate action plan and expect to make any difference? Well, you can't really make any difference if it's just us. It has to be a team effort. And, you know, if it's, it's not just SIMPA either. It's a strategic direction a lot of utilities are going. I would assume it was their peers that made them get their tail ending gear. When I'm, you look I think it's going it's uh, market forces, believe yeah. it or not. Yeah, all the way yeah. along. Yeah. Because the, a lot of the other partners in SIMPA are not very big cities in southern Minnesota. And, and, those, and there's a couple of really big cities in southern Minnesota, too, that have a lot of sway. But, you know, I remember going to a meeting in 2016 with, or 2017, with the uh, with the SIMPA board and and the conversation about about climate change and renewable energy just was not heard. Like it really it it landed like a you know like a brick just dunk, and then they didn't pick it up and take it anywhere. So there's obviously there was obviously some conversations that happened that changed the changed the tune of SIMPA and we're really glad that they did because that's like Shane's saying like Mm -hmm. This makes it a lot easier for us to do this now. Yeah, so what have we been doing? I started as sustainability coordinator in January 2020 and um, just been working on projects out of the climate action plan. So a few energy efficiency projects. Uh, we installed the EV charging stations, City Hall and the campground. Those are two obvious things that we've done. Um, and some decarbonization work, um, 20 kW of solar up at the Public Works garage, and then we've got a, a, an interconnection process that meets the state's requirements um, that we did, at, um, and most of that was done with the PUC. You can see there's a similarity here on these strategies where it's us dipping our toe into an idea and trying to learn about it and figure out how it works. You know, the, we're not going to electrify the transportation system in Grand Marais by having the city build charging stations. That's not what's going to do it. People are going to make these choices on their own, and we need to learn about how that how that works. When, how, how, how are people using them? Um, what does it look like from a load perspective? what sort of pricing programs might be a good idea and eventually it's going to be charging stations in people's homes or at people's businesses where these changes are going to be made. So this is just our attempts to learn about it. Same with the solar. Uh, we're installing some solar and some fairly significantly sized solar projects mm -hmm. but obviously that's not going to move the needle on the percentage of carbon in our electrical supply. Uh, but we're learning about what does it look like to own solar? Is small scale solar a good idea? Uh, is, and now, you know, that SIMPA is looking at renewables for their own supply, it's like, okay, well now we know. This isn't something we have to keep doing here locally. Uh, but we do have uh, programs that we're building so that folks that do want to do this on their own properties can do it. And we, we understand how to incorporate them into our system and, you know, what we need to charge to make sure that it's fair to all the customers and what contracts we need to have in place so that we're complying with the law and so that that's kind of a lot of these projects are that way us just trying to learn about these areas where we weren't involved before but we see that we will be involved deeply in the future and that strategy goes back to the climate action plan to the leading by example oops wrong way <coughs> so 
our EV charging stations on the left and uh, our ground mounted solar array on the right. Um, the charging stations were given to us by SIMPA and we operate them now and kind of become a bit of a resource for community members and businesses who are interested in putting in their own charging stations. I've talked to a number of businesses and, and organizations that are interested and want to know more. How did we do it and um, would it be a good idea for their property? So um, being a resource for the community and then this array, we went with a local installer for it and his name is Shem Falter and he was a participant in a program that we did to provide um, or to, to help have local installers compete with the regional and statewide installers and so we did a, a grant program where we put a few electricians through the NABCEP certification course and so Shem took that course and got certified and then the PUC selected his proposal for that um, for our installation. No, they selected it because it was the lowest price. So <laughs> he did I mean, have a good bid. Yeah, <laughs> it's a good thing that it, I mean any local contractor is going to be able to get some economies of scale just based on mobilization, as opposed to having a big contractor from Minneapolis try to come up here yep. and install a project. So it really serves us well, not just to have that you know the jobs and everything else that be a part of the economy, but it, it makes <coughs> it cheaper for folks here too to have that local expertise. And now we've got a great relationship with Shem, working relationship, and he's helping us get our other two solar arrays, the Gunflint Hills and the PUC rooftop solar array, back up and running again, and he can help us with maintenance on those, and it's just a phone call to him instead of contacting someone in Hudson, Wisconsin, or whoever put in the, the rooftop. So uh, things are going well there. Uh, our EV charger usage, just since it came online the end of June 2021, we've gotten 667 charging sessions. Uh, we're we're out competing lots of other Simpa cities. <coughs> we're third or fourth for charger usage in all of Simpa cities. And even in um, the month of February, which was our lowest performing month of the entire time that our charges have been online we still had 18 charging sessions so people are using our chargers every month of the year and in August and July I even got an email from someone at SIMPA that was asking what we were doing to have such great performing chargers because they were they, they were the, the most used chargers in SIMPA's network so and that's did, pretty cool. What did we tell them? We told them we're Grand Marais. Yeah. We said <laughs> we're 55 miles from the next town. That's well, we that's just it. People yeah. in a bigger city probably charge at home or whatever on their right. cars, whereas when they get up here, they have to charge. Yep. That's and how they, we could they charge. They got to charge. You know, so we okay. have more charging <coughs> sessions than Rochester does on their simple provided right. charger because there's hundreds of chargers in Rochester and, and you know, even publicly available ones probably. And but well, most of the cities in Sempa are like us. They're small. They've got just their own isolated area. And you know, nor it's North Branch that's the big one. It's because they're on the highway, yeah. right? And they're you know a distance from things, and it's a good destination for folks to stop and charge. And right. cool. Charge to do a little shopping? Maybe. Yeah. No shopping. So, we have the only fast charger on the North Shore. So there's other charging stations along the shore, but we've got the only fast charger. And that one gets quite a bit of use. Cool. Okay. That's awesome. Uh, the, the solar went online in October, and it's generated 4.8 megawatts. Of course, this is the worst time of year for solar generation. So, But I just thought, hey, we've got some data. I'll show it to you. So current project set I'm working on, one thing that just happened a couple weeks ago is at the library, we did a heating assessment. So a technician from Jamar Company came up and just ran through the whole library heating system, which is quite complex. There's radiators and base baseboards and in-floor heating and air conditioners and air circulators. So we uh, we are still waiting on the report for that, but um, kind of the the quick response from the technician was that the library heating system is functioning well and 
and everything seems to be working great. And that leads into a, an electrification project that um, we're considering putting in air source heat pumps at the library, replacing the air conditioners that they have, which those air conditioners are no longer supported because they have a, a refrigerant that can't be used anymore. Or hmm. if they break or need to be maintained, they, they need to be replaced. And so the way to replace those is to replace them with a heat pump, which can do air conditioning and heating. Um, and the heat pump would replace 40% of the propane use at the library at a, um, and, and yeah, so reduced propane use by 40%. Uh, still just calling contractors and asking for proposals on that, but an electrification project. Um, and then the other one I want to point out is the home EV charging rate. We're trying to find a way that our billing system and our meters, we have those new AMI meters um, in most homes now, how we can get the billing system and the meters to talk to each other so that we can do a, a home EV charging rate to encourage people to charge in the overnight hours, off peak <coughs> times, mm -hmm. and they would get a reduced rate at that time. And then any other time they would charge, it would be at a higher rate than our, than our standard rate. So that's something that only one other Simpa City has done. And we're, it, it would be a great way to encourage people to go with an electric vehicle, or at least maybe it won't change anyone's mind outright, like, oh, now, now the PUC offers an EV charge rate, but it's another check in the pro column. Yeah. Is there a conversation about, like, incentive? I mean, I know there's, like, federal incentives for installing that, but as far as, like, incentives from SIMPA or the city PUC to, like, actually not just the rate end of it, but the actual, like, installation, you know, that, that side of it? There's a lot of ways to, <coughs> there, yeah, there's conversations. There's a lot of ways you can do it with rebates and such. Um, the way that we were consulted to set this up, at least preliminarily, was to just offer this Focus this rate. Side. Yeah. yeah. And, and then more like a time of use conversation, too. So it's not so much about just the rate, but it's, um, you know, the mutual benefit of the cheap rate in the middle of the night is that it's not necessarily our most expensive time. And if we can keep our peak down and we can buy power during our off-peak times, then it's cheaper on the system. We can pass those savings on as an incentive. We have programs like this already with our off-peak heat and our dual fuel heat programs that we offer. But neither of them are a real good fit for EV charging because they both require a uh, you know, fairly substantial investment in your electrical system to set it up. And they don't always work. <laughs> and you know, when you need to charge your vehicle, you need to charge your vehicle. And if we've turned off your charger and you can't use it, not many people are going to be interested in a program like that. Right. But they might be interested in a program where they usually charge when it's cheap, but if they need to charge at four in the afternoon, they can, and it just costs quite a bit more, really, in a similar manner to what we would charge in this parking lot charging station out here, which is significantly more than, than a person in town pays for electricity. So that's what we're trying to figure out. And, and we want to figure it out in a way that minimizes the amount of equipment we have to have a customer purchase or the amount of work that they might have to do on their house or the sorts of restrictions we would put in place on how they could use it just so that it's something that people will t actually take. Okay. And then I just wanted to highlight some future priorities that we have. The first one is to collaborate with SIMPA. They have uh, a bunch of programs that they're trying to launch with air source heat pumps. And actually this week I've been talking with our energy services rep from SIMPA about contractors and getting contractors to work up here on air source heat pumps because it is a, an issue. We don't have an air source heat pump specialist up here. And so that's the biggest hurdle to electrification of heat. So collaborating with SIMPA is a big deal. And they're, they're talking of EV incentives, and uh, that's something we want to work with them on as well. Um, and then focusing on electrification um, with heat pumps and providing that EV infrastructure and being that EV resource for, for our customers. And then um, 
another thing that I've identified as a missing link is access to energy efficiency here. Um, having an energy audit done on your home is a hard thing to do in Grand Marais. Uh, usually requires someone coming up from Duluth and so there are virtual energy audits out there that the energy audit companies are saying is actually working quite well where you just walk around your house on a zoom meeting basically with your phone and they say touch that point here and you just kind of walking around and there's a energy audit on the other side who knows the system knows home energy really well and uh, so it, it's something to think about anyway but those are our those are our priorities with the climate action plan going forward. Cool. That's awesome. Yeah, that's yeah. all I got. So there's there's a lot of projects, a lot, a lot, a lot of projects that were identified in the climate action plan. Yeah. And and you mentioned earlier when I when I had talked to you that there are people who are in the community starting to think like they want to get involved. Um, do you have outlets for that? Any way of, of, of directing people to different projects throughout the city yet? Or is that something that we should ha tell people to stay tuned for, for, for ways that they can help the city and help themselves find more energy efficiency, better, better climate mitigation in their own lives, that kind of a thing? Yeah. I've been focused on like internal city stuff mm -hmm. and programs that the, we can do you know, working with the PUC and such. Um, but the kind of community engagement you're talking about, I haven't, I haven't done a lot with. And I've actually worked with CCLEP quite a lot and they do a great job of community engagement. And that so sense. that's kind of something that I've, I've, anytime I get into a community engagement discussion, I try to push people towards CCLEP because that's really their bread and butter and what they do best. And um, not that we couldn't do that, but that there's already that niche is filled in the community. So, um, I, but yeah, I do speak with C-Club often and I'm, I, I attend their board meetings and such. So we're involved. Sweet. Yeah, that's, that's great. I, for some reason, I totally forgot about C-Club. <laughs> but to ask you, like, are they gone? No, not <laughs> no they just <laughs> hired a new coordinator gone. and yeah. So they're a little lull between coordinators, but they're, back. they're mm -hmm. rolling. Okay. Any other questions for Shane on the uh, on the update for the climate action plan? No, I'm just finally happy to see Simpa getting on board. They're kind of behind you. Know, you get Excel and all the other larger providers. They've been a little bit behind, so. <coughs> Simpa's always been great with with the different rebate programs and things like that. But this this has Definitely. been a this is a huge shift, like yeah. a huge institutional shift, and that's just really really encouraging to see. It's almost on everything I'm working on. If I start something, it's okay. First call is simple. What do you think of this, or how can you help us with this, or so? They're they're a big partner, a big part of what we want to accomplish. Anything else? Thank you. Thank you so Thank much, Shane. Appreciate, appreciate the update. Right. Appreciate the work you're doing. Yep. I'll see y'all in a couple of weeks with <laughs> storm water. There we go. Perfect. <coughs> All right. So next thing on the agenda is the arbitrage reporting. So this is um, for a contract with Ellers to provide these services for us. And Mike, maybe you can tell us a little bit more about what the arbitrage services we're getting here are. Does um, everyone know what arbitrage is? <coughs> Arbitrator. I know that it's like, it's <laughs> like the, the, the selling and reselling of, of bonds and stocks for profit, but I don't know exactly how that would apply to the city. We are legally um, limited in the amount of money that we can make on the proceeds of these bonds. Oh. Arbitrage is about you can't borrow money and then invest it and make more money on your investment than what you're paying in interest on. That, that's what and somebody has to monitor that. And basically, our bond agreements. Uh, require us to do that and it's a legal requirement as well but we don't have the expertise to to do anything related to our bonds right we we always have a financial advisor who writes the bond agreements and and bond counsel that that uh, goes through and creates all the legal agreements and then we the financial advisors go out on the market for us and work with bond purchasers and do all the work that's required for us to borrow money legally and this is just one of those things that they do for us 
Seems pretty straightforward. As far as the the price that they're they're charging for this does not seem like a lot of money, <coughs> especially in considering the size of the bonds that they're. <laughs> yeah, I don't have a. I mean, we obviously we didn't go out on the market and ask people for different prices here because we use Ellers for all the different stages, and I think it would probably be too complicated to bring in a, another party to to do this for us, mm -hmm. but not impossible. Um, and I thought, yeah, at this price, I'm not concerned about it. I think we've always had a good experience working with Ellers. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Any questions? I'll oh. make a motion to approve the master arbitrage services contract with Ellers for the required arbitrage reporting. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? <coughs> I'm assuming they'll be giving us a report when they get this done. Well, um, they're preparing a report, two reports actually. Yeah. Um, whether or not you have any interest in reading it, I guess <laughs> I don't think you need to. This is why we have Kim read it. I don't think she's going to either. <laughs> They're basically just going to tell us if we if we made too much. We're not money. the audience here. I mean, they're they're com making sure that we're complying with the law. With but the, the folks that need to know that, are, we know that, right? It's the bondholders that that are really the audience here, and the regulatory agencies. <clears throat> okay, motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carries. All right. Sounds good. We'll have to sign that one. Now it's time for precinct conversation. So how many, did everybody get uh, that email uh, yeah. regards the request to yeah. redistrict, yeah. change mm -hmm. the precinct? Um, so I talked to Brady today about it. And it, what I gathered from the conversation was that um, this, the county has a number of different ways to fulfill their requirement for redistricting and, and resetting these boundaries to make sure that they fall within um, a 10% variation from one another and, and that they meet other criteria, which I'm not privy to. <coughs> but the request that they made, that he made, was to move the, the precinct boundary for the city from 4th Avenue West to 5th Avenue West which is in the city only a difference of about 59 people um, in each district, but makes the, the assigning of other voter blocks on other parts of, the, of the, that particular district a lot easier for them. Mm -hmm. So as far as the function for the city, it doesn't really change much for the function of the city. Um, it's, you know, and it's 59 people who are going to be in a different district for the next election. And it won't change the voting locations. I was just curious. Yeah. yeah. Uh, because it's, those are set it still has the same. oddness that does. the <coughs> West Precinct's voting location is located in the East it's Precinct. Uh, at least it still be a straight line now. But it's, <laughs> we're a small enough town, I don't believe that's a real issue. So it's just kind of confusing. I mean, I, I think moving this line isn't that big a deal either, but thankfully that's because I'm not one of the 59 people. That there, there needs to be some effort on our part and Brady's part, I think, just to make sure that everyone that's in that area is aware that this change was made. But even, I mean, this in this community, you, get, you show up at the wrong place and they tell you to go somewhere else and it's two and a half blocks away and it's not a real barrier. And we do barrier. tell them. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I don't think there's a real barrier here. Is there some way, like, if we vote to do this tonight, to change this line tonight, is there some way that we can have Brady send? Well, Brady will send a letter to those 59 people anyway. I don't know what his plans are, but I'll talk to him about it. Yeah. I mean, so he still Stacey owes me a slightly Fort better map. <gasps> what? Does Stacy live on 4th Avenue West? Or is she on 3rd Avenue 3rd, I think. Okay. Oh, then that's fine. <laughs> 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 that but she would be on the west side of it anyways. You know. Okay. Yeah, she lives on third, I think. She's in the east precinct. Yeah. And will remain in the east she precinct. She will still be in yeah. the right. east. Right. That's the only thing her. I was yes. thinking is that if she was on fourth. I mean, However, they, I think that probably would have been an issue that the county board talked about before they so. made the request. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Being that she's there. That would have impacted, like, like when Jan ran for county commissioner, that would have impacted her, though, because she was technically in the western precinct. Move it over a block, she would have been in the eastern. That's true. Yeah. So... So that's, okay, that's interesting. Okay, it'll be a straight line. This will be a straight line. 
you know, until it gets to the highway. To get people to the well, yeah, but I mean, just up and down the street. You know, how people believe me. I. It'll be easier this way. No, yes. you really need to be. <laughs> but I live on. I don't care. Just go up there. Yeah. Just go. <laughs> so yeah, this will help. So I mean, so is it? Am I gathering that the that the council is feeling in favor of this? I mean, it's sure. uh, there. Doesn't affect the city. It it doesn't affect the city per se. It affects fifty nine people in the city. <laughs> and they're going to be fine, and we'll make sure they are. Yeah, yeah. and we'll we'll make sure to communicate very clearly with them, and un so they understand why. Um, so what we'll need is we'll need a motion to do this. Um, well, there's a resolution. You put the resolution in. There. Well, I didn't put it in the packet because I didn't even write it until it's not in there. It's an email. Monday because I didn't get this request until Monday. Well, let me see. But I did email it to you all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Let me pull up the number so that we can get the draft. Because there's it's a number. 2206 on. is the number on the resolution. So it's resolution 22 06 reestablishing precinct and polling places. So the polling places will remain the same, um, and that we're just changing it from 4th Avenue to 5th. And this is basically a, a, this, a resolution that Chris gave me that he used in a different city, and I'm so pleased at how simple our little center section is compared to the one that he sent me hmm. with wards and districts and all kinds of other nonsense that we don't have to deal with that's really nice. yeah if you guys took the time to look through that redistricting thing that that Brady sent out like the booklet from oh, the yeah. state that was I looked through the entire thing and when it started getting into the ward conversations I was like oh god I'm so glad we don't have wards because <laughs> that would impact each one of us like in our position well it wouldn't impact the mayor I guess but each of the counselors it would impact yes how you were elected, where you were elected from, that sort of thing. At large is nice. Oh, well. At large is nice. At, at 1,400 population, I can't imagine trying yeah, anything else. Nice. Yeah. Okay, so then is there a motion for resolution 2022-06? Yeah. Yeah. So that's, who said you? Did you say yeah? Oh, I thought you were going to say something. <laughs> that's too much for me to try to repeat. Why don't you? Oh, no, I'll just so say moved. for the resolution. <laughs> yeah, you just say so moved. <laughs> so moved. There you go. Excellent. Okay, so we got a motion. <laughs> so motion seconded. by Tracy. So seconded by Michael. Did Any? I mean, I heard Anton make the motion right. twice. No, I've never I heard Tracy know. make the motion. He, he was just mumbling under his breath. <laughs> I heard Tracy make the motion. I guess. And I heard you the know, you guys here. tell me. Oh. So we've got a motion by Tracy. We've got a second by Michael. And um, oh. any further discussion? I like just to reiterate. We'll talk with we'll talk with Brady. Make sure that those people are informed of the Yeah, and the attachment Exhibit A is not in final form yet. I just got that one little clip that shows where the line moves, but we need the map to include the entire city. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Clear. Yeah. Very cool. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carries. All right, wonderful. Brady will be very relieved. Brady does thank you, yes. Yep, he'll be very relieved to hear that tomorrow. All right, moving to council and staff reports. Craig, do you have anything? Yep. <coughs> Golf uh, or park board meeting. I was unable to make it. I had to hospital um, uh, appointment in, in Duluth, but I did call Dave and I got some information back on him. Uh, there wasn't a whole a lot that was discussed at that meeting there was uh, some fees that were discussed about the golf course um one little item went up a little bit and then actually another fee uh i think it had to do with cart and nine whole rounds actually went down a little bit so that was the main thing that was talked about was tweaking some of the golf fees the park stuff has already been um, enforced already since we're already taking reservations <clears throat> excuse me taking reservations so that was pretty much everything as far as oh there was another um they did talk about uh music downtown uh for next summer and they've actually tallied how many times each musician has has been down there singing and i think they're they might be looking at tweaking those numbers a little bit to balance it a little bit more so um, um big thanks to pete by the way yeah Pete was involved in that and mm -hmm. um, the other musicians that are down there um, about um, maybe maybe there's too much music too many nights and maybe try to level it out a little bit per uh, week so just just make it 
there's some um, feedback about noise from certain uh, complaints. So I mean, but they all know about it. You know, they're all they're all they know how to place their speakers so the noise doesn't drift up. You know, I can hear noise at my house sometimes, but I don't care. It doesn't bother me. But a lot of it is too is if we have a wind direction off the harbor, everybody gets to hear the music. And sure. for me, it's fine. I don't care. But some people, it's not every night. You know, so. Anyways, there's, they're working on that. I'm sure they're pretty successful at accomplishing their goals on that, the noise part of it. Um, as far as the PUC meeting we had, we have two new members. Bill Hansen was added to the PUC. Charles Hathaway, who is here with us this evening. Um, two great people to put on the PUC. I think that's going to be some big help for that board. And the other discussion we had during the PUC was we had Tom Nelson come in and talk a little bit about our water leveling system that is old. And um, we're going to change that from a hard line communication system to a cell phone, not Wi Fi, but cell phone system, so that we can manage our water levels uh, better. We have uh, um, that's an old system. And we have money that we can use that uh, we can earmark to that project that really isn't money that's coming out of the taxpayers pocket so it's kind of a good thing to get that project you can exp if you want to explain well this is our funding chunk of federal money that we received you know COVID yeah relief related and we can use it for this project so it's cool. it's kind of nice because it, I think it's around sixty eight thousand dollars that we can do to upgrade our water system we're going to come back and talk about fixing the roof on the water plant with some of the rest of the money at yeah. your next meeting. Yeah. Right. So it's kind of nice because it's not... We knew that was coming, though. Yes. Tom told yeah. us last year. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, Tom's kind of ahead of things that... And it's kind of nice to know what things that are... A lot of systems are old, and, you know, they don't run forever. So that'll be a big thing, a nice thing to get fixed. Um, and that's I think, pretty much covers that meeting with those items. So that's it. Is um, Tom mentioned something at our, the last time that he told us about his priorities, and he said something about replacing the filter medium for the for the water the water filters. plant. Yeah, for the water plant. Is yeah, that, we had a discussion. Was that something that was going to happen in 2023? We weren't. It's not scheduled. Not scheduled. Uh, it was one of the things we were considering doing with the money. Okay. So I think it's probably been displaced by these other projects at this point, but we're still gathering information about it. Cool. A lot of stuff to do. Yeah. Best water on the North Shore. As long as that lake stays clean, we're, right. we're in good shape. That's our investment right there. <laughs> Keep putting the water back cleaner than we take it out. That's well, there you go. Right. We could take that water we recycle and sell it to somebody. It's Ooh. so clean. Yeah. No, 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 don't, no, no, no. <laughs> Not for sale. <laughs> no, that was the boo boo of. Wah -wah. <laughs> Wisconsin. Yeah. yeah. Not so going we're there. Not selling we need it for our this. fish. So we're putting it back in the lake. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. We need lake trout. <laughs> yes. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Uh, Anton, anything? Our EDA meeting for last night got pushed till next Tuesday, so I'll have, well, I won't be there, but I'll try and call in, do it anyway. So I'll try and talk about the zoning situation because we haven't had a meeting. We haven't had an EDA meeting since we kicked that back to them. So. Anyway, try and move that forward. But that's all. <coughs> that's the only thing I've got right now. Cool. Can I make a comment on that? Sure. A one sentence. As many as you need. What about a redefinition of a what defines a long-term rental? I guess that was part of the conversation we had the first time, right? I don't know if we did, because right now we say it. I don't know. I don't know if I'm saying this the right direction. Um, right now it has to be at least 30 days. What about six months or a year, like a typical lease? Yeah. And, I think that those definitions days. are based on the state definitions, like the state definitions for a, for a, like a for a residential use or something is 30 days. I mean, they might <coughs> be based on some other people's definitions, but we've got them in our code, and they're the, the actionable ones are the ones in our code. So that goes back to our code, not your, okay, never mind, then I'll take that somewhere else we, we no the no, zoning ordinance is in the code and and if they make a request that's what we'd be talking about changing Anyways. I think your comment is exactly what they want to hear yeah what sort of things would be interesting to you okay 
Well, that was it. It was more than one sentence, though. <laughs> That's as many as you needed. I didn't know. Anything yeah. else, Anton? Lots of semicolons. I don't think you actually. <laughs> <laughs> run on, run on <laughs> sentences. Yeah. yeah, I'm good. That's all. Okay. Tracy, anything? Sure. You were hoping I'd say no. No, I, I, I'm <laughs> excited to hear. I was invited to the Lions Club meeting yesterday. What a fun group. Um, and I, I wasn't. They are. They got a bunch of new members. Mm. It's been a pretty good time. But they asked me here because they're getting ready to think through Fisherman's Picnic. So the end result is I'm, I said, fine, I don't have any answers, but I'll write down questions and go get you answers. And I had a couple suggestions for them. So I will send my questions to you, Mike, for answers, because I don't think we, it's not like we need to talk about what they asked, mm. though some of the things they're interested in, just so you know, is um, somehow if they need to, stepping in for the bingo tent and beer garden, because that is for which they've gotten one of their largest comments from people in the community of one of their most favorite things, a fisherman's picnic. And they, so they want to you know, keep all the things that people like going. We can help with that. So there's questions you know, about all of that. And I said, fine, I'll go get you answers about what you can and can't do. They have a lot of concerns about bathrooms. They have some concerns about um, maybe that they're not totally certain if they paid for some uh, pumping costs they shouldn't have last year. And they're also looking at how they spent five grand in 2019 on bathrooms and 3,400 last year, and they're wondering if that's a cost that somewhere else they could be sharing over their help with that they, as an organization, because really, it's not a huge money maker for them. Okay, sure, it's, you know, it's the ticket. So there was that. Um, just a thought for further discussion. <coughs> that's um, definitely one of the questions I don't have an answer for, though. So that's up to you all, right? Right. I mean, and yes. I, I get that part. Put them on the agenda and yeah, them and the then also they had some questions about use of the harbor, what what kinds of things could be done in the harbor for events and activities, <coughs> and who, where all permissions need to come from, things like that. So that was yeah. part of it. And then I suggested back to them that um, you should supply the city with a list of all the activities and who is in charge of each activity and how to contact them in the moment because the Lions Club really doesn't run many activities. It's all these other organizations. Mm -hmm. And in the moment, you can't have people running over to that one booth and asking who to call. It makes no sense because it's usually I need something now. And then vice versa, I said the city should also give you a list of you know who went from the park, if it's a garbage issue or an electric issue, whoever, who that weekend is the on-call person, phone number, whatever. Mm -hmm. So back, back and forth, they have the communication things they need. That so that's my comment splendid. to them. So that was a fun time, and I'm not being facetious. It was a fun <laughs> evening with the Lions Club last night because cool. they're getting going. Awesome. And they're, they're really trying really hard to have a, <coughs> a, fish, a fisherman's picnic like we always would have again and not the disruption yeah. in the last couple of years. And Awesome. Um, and then I went to the downtown, I didn't go anywhere, I stayed home and attended the Downtown <laughs> Business Coalition meeting on Tuesday. Um, and their main agenda item was snow plowing. And so, unfortunately, I think they, I was sensing they did a lot of outreach to make sure more people would attend, business owners would attend, but they didn't have a real large attendance. Um, for asking about the plowing situation. And what I learned is the letter went out, which I didn't know. The letter went out to the business owners. Yeah. And I don't know what it looks like, but they said the, the big question from them is, where can we put the snow? So I don't know if that's in the letter or not, but they, you know, if we have to haul the snow, where, where are we allowed to haul it to? That seemed to be something they weren't clear about. Um, still a lot of concerns um, around the whole, the alley pieces and, you know, what should be done and what are the standards that we want as a community for our plowing, I guess is the easiest way to say it. <coughs> um, 
And, you know, everyone agreed, well, it was a bad year. Well, that's why we need a plan so that the next time, if, even if it is five years from now, we know what, what we should do or not do or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then that delved off, of course, Monday was a particularly warm and sunny day, which I meant, I think, a lot of slop and greasy snow and some bumps, right? Yep. So then that led to commentary about um, the poor conditions around some of our streets and some of our sidewalk um, conditions as well, and questioning if the city was plowing sidewalks as they should. Um, some of the business owners also said, you know, as we know we are to do, we plow, our, or we plow, we shovel our sidewalk, mm -hmm. but then we have other businesses that are not, and so, you know, you go a certain distance and then it's not been taken care of. What do we do about that? What does the city do about that? Do we monitor, do we watch that? Do we talk to business owners about that? You know, what's that? And then there was also just conversation that in general, the, the plowing of sidewalks was not very well done. Um, I think that's, that's the summary there. And just a thanks, Chris, for the last couple meetings, for all that you did to help us out on complicated subjects, because that's why you're here and we appreciate it. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's it. Cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Michael, anything? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, ARDC met, and they were just going over 2021, and it was it was good. It was a good year. They, the revolving loan fund is in great shape and it's pretty much fully funded for the next year. And then the uh, CARES funds um, all got out the door. So that was great. There was just a little bit left and I think by now it's, it should be totally done. And um, I was trying to think of that. Oh, and one of the recipients of the CARES funds was our art colony right here. Cool. So that was great. Um, and obviously they did <coughs> help out with the work on the Gitchigami and also um, extending out the, the North Country Trail, which we're connected to, not directly, but indirectly. Um, yeah, so that was it for those guys. Cool. cool. All right. Um, so the North House Board had a retreat uh, this past week. Um, and uh, I don't know. They that was it was wild. Yeah, it was this past week, um, and it was actually it was actually up in Grand Portage. So I wasn't able to go, but I but I was I followed through on on it. Um, so they're doing some some consulting work to you know continue visioning into the future, which is really good to hear. And they're um, they're starting some some partnerships, some st strategic uh, program programmatic partnerships with. Um, uh, with Grand Portage, which is super cool um, to to see that partnership uh, happening, um, they're also starting the process of of developing their their new property there, um, which is the Dockside Fish Market property. Uh, in the spring, they're planning on breaking ground uh, for for a new classroom um, on the harbor there, which will be one of the one of the the focal points of the campus, which is really exciting. I think I'm really excited to see what they do there. Um, they're also doing a capital campaign, pretty big capital campaign. So that's, uh, um, they've been really successful in, in finding support for their projects. And it's, it's really encouraging to see, to see that going well for them. Um, yesterday was the local emergency uh, preparedness committee meeting. Um, I was able to listen in on it, uh, and it sounds like um, there's a lot of organizations in the community that are still kind of struggling with their response, you know, with, with continuing a response. There's a lot of fatigue going on around the, the COVID response, um, and we, you know, we aren't out of the woods yet. Um, the state guidance has said no masks, obviously, we're all here. Um, I definitely just continue to encourage people in the community to, um, if you're not vaccinated, get vaccinated. They're still offering vaccinations um, up at the up at the clinic and the hospital, and um, and we still have more that we can do to to make sure this doesn't uh, negatively impact our 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 community anymore that it already has. Um, 
that's just kind of a nutshell of what they what they talked about. There's a lot of other stuff that isn't really related to city operation. So that's what I have. Anything? Yeah. Um, North House has a variance application in front of us right now. The Planning Commission would have held their hearing on it last week, but they also had uh, issues with scheduling. So it'll be uh, in the next two weeks from now, and it'll be potentially on your next agenda then to get to look at the details of what they're proposing to build and talk about it. Uh, and then just this morning I was in Preston. If anybody knows where that is, well, Minnesota. It's quite the hall back. It was a good, yeah, it's at the absolute uh, end of how far I dare go to attend a SIMPA meeting uh, because their SIMPA meetings are always scheduled for the second Wednesday, not always, but generally scheduled for the second Wednesday. And then they travel around to different uh, member cities. They have their annual meeting in October where that's always in Bloomington and they have their first meeting of the year is always in Simpa headquarters in Rochester and then they just travel around to the other 18 on a semi-regular basis. So why the heck would we want to attend those meetings anymore? Shane was also at the meeting but he was there virtually. Um, this is part of our strategy and this is something we talked about with the PUC is if we need them to be our partner we need to be their partner too. We need to take the whatever resources it requires to be as p much a part of that organization as we can pull off. So I will continue to attend uh, as many meetings as I can fit into my schedule and we're also, Shane is our alternate representative and he's been attending the meetings virtually and, and he may also need to travel on our stead uh, to be down there. It's just so much more effective to be with people face to face. Um, Oftentimes the meetings, you know, if they require travel, multiple people travel and there's an opportunity to talk about things the night before even. Um, today some of the issues that we talked about were uh, coal supply and the effect that the world economy is having on the energy market and how they're going to be changing their uh, modeling assumptions and what sort of sensitivity tests that they want to create to think about energy prices for, you know, the rest of the year and the next couple of years and we talked about uh, strangely enough they're changing out some of their SCADA system controls from hard copper wire to cellular <laughs> service and I thought oh that's fun you probably don't have deer eating yours wherever you've got it <laughs> like we do but still it's like we're right there with them they'll be here in May um, the, it's our turn to host and one of the things I talked to their executive director about he asked me if we had any need for kind of an orientation about what is SIMPA um, maybe six months ago, maybe even longer. And I said, yes, but let's hold off on that because I need a utilities commission first. And now we have one. So we'll be scheduling either around their visit in May or if there's some better way for us to do it, some uh, orientation type work with SIMPA uh, where their director and some of their staff can come up here and talk about what SIMPA is and we can talk about what our partnership is and I'll invite you all to that if you're interested since it's really quite a large part of the city organization our partnership mm -hmm. with SIMPA. So thanks for uh, allowing us the ability to continue to participate like that and yeah it's great to do it and my weather app sucks because <laughs> it was for a long time said there's no chance it's going to snow there's no chance it's going to snow and it actually snowed and rained on my trip down last night and snowed while I was there today and it wasn't <laughs> bad but I thought oh I don't really don't no. want to drive in the snow so it's no. March lucky you I know <laughs> right. it's both, roll the dice it's both rain and snow <laughs> <laughs> yeah. all right that's it that's it nice. any closing comments all right, we have completed.